All right, hi guys. So today is 13 of June. Um, I am ready to upload my next video. Um, and I know previously my previous uh, short clip was actually about, uh, well, the previous previous one was actually about um, P. Maroni and Raspberry Pi Pico. So I was in that mood, you know, the previous week. And this week, basically the past week, my I basically wanted to to dive into OpenCV and uh, and also to use the opportunity to really dive into the uh, single board computers that I have in my possession, which includes the Raspberry Pi 4B as well as uh, the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. I have the 4GB model, which I'll show you guys later in this video. So basically, the making of this video, you know, is really the, the first of a series of videos that I'll be uploading. Um, likely going to be about seven to eight videos based on my initial estimations. Um, but it could change later. I could decide that maybe at maybe by the time I reach the sixth video of the series, it's like, okay, I pretty much covered everything. So um, it's to be determined, but I would estimate that there'll be around seven to eight videos for this series. Um, okay, so let me just start by saying that, you know, um, I wasn't 100% sure I wanted to upload a video today or to make one because for the past week, as I start diving into OpenCV, learning about OpenCV, it's really, it felt like there wasn't much to share, to be honest. Because like learning a new subject, for example, it's always the basics that you have to kind of get through first. And before you get to the meatier and stuff and the more interesting stuff. Um, so at the very beginning for the past week, I, I think I spent most of my time really just getting through the basics of trying to understand more about OpenCV. So, um, so it, it, I mean, yeah, I wasn't sure I wanted to make a video, but again, I was reminded that the whole reason why I want to make content, you know, as a Steam enthusiast is to share my learning experience, to share my journey. So uh, that means actually talking about what I've learned even during the first week of learning about a particular subject matter. So yeah, so I, I assume that this first video might seem a little less interesting compared to the rest of the videos that will come in this series. Um, but at the end of the day, I just want to make sure that, you know, I document my journey, my learning journey. All right, so for the past week, uh, what I've done is that I've been focusing on Raspberry Pi 4B. So one of the things that I discovered when I uh, I took my Raspberry Pi 4B out and, and set it up was uh, I, I did a check. I, I don't know. I just had this thought at the back of my mind, like, you know, I wanted to see if uh, the 64-bit version, now the 64-bit version, uh, was already available, but it wasn't like uh, stable. It was a stable release at the time. And I tried to install it. I tried to use it. Obviously, it wasn't, yeah, it's like they say, there were some issues, of course. So I decided to check it out. And I found out that they officially have uh, a supported version that was released on the 4th of April this year. So it's not too far back, still fairly new. And I realized this was the perfect opportunity for me to to download the, the OS, the Raspbian OS and, and install it. Now, it might not seem like much to some people when it comes to 64-bit OS, but from a software development world where I come from, the it what it means is that having a being able to run a 64-bit OS means that when it comes to coding, when it comes to uh, storing of data, variables, you can actually um, store much larger numbers. You can store uh, more data. But of course, 64-bit actually can store a lot more than, than what the Raspberry Pi can manage. Um, because, yeah, 
Uh, one of the very good examples uh, that I can share is this when I found this reply on uh, Quora. So uh, someone by the name of Tom Winberg gave a very good answer about you know the difference between uh, running a OS, a uh, 32-bit OS, and a 64-bit OS, or you know if you have the processor. So Raspbian previously only supports a 32-bit OS, even though by the time they already have a sort of a, a ARM64 uh, chip on board. So yeah, that is the reason why I did that. And then of course, you know, um, from a, a more, I would say day-to-day -day tinkerer use, you know, with a with an OS that supports 64-bit version, it also means that there's more compatibility with um, other different softwares that you might be interested to install onto your, your Raspberry Pi. So that's something you can think about as well. All right, so last week I did spend quite a bit of time going through the basics of OpenCV. Um, like I say, you know, I was, I've been following this uh, ebook, this book that I own and yeah, I'm just getting through the basics. So I shared about this before. Previously, I actually did go through the kind of the basics, the first few chapters like this book, similar to this book, but it was a different book. But I did try to go through the basics, but I wasn't all in. So, you know, I didn't really like register some of the things that I was learning. Um, I was basically just going through the motion of trying to learn to get past the basics, you know, kind of like, I just want to quickly skip through the basics and get to the 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 meat of what OpenCV is. But um, that's the point, you know, when I when I started this journey to and to revisit the basics, I realized that I actually forgot a lot of the basic stuff that I previously tried to learn because like I say, I wasn't all in at that time. I, I didn't really have that invested interest to want to learn. <laughs> um, truly invested interest, I guess. So now I can say that I have gotten past the basics. I've been going through, so far, at least up to last Friday, I've already finished uh, chapter five. So now I'm going to cover chapter six this week. Um, and I feel like, you know, I finally passed the, maybe the middle, not exactly middle, okay. Maybe uh, chapter seven onwards will be, you know, like the more exciting stuff and so on. But it's still... I feel like I'm still at the basics of understanding OpenCV. So this is what I want to do for this coming week. You know, there were things that I was learning actually past week, stuff like um, understanding NumPy and how it applies to OpenCV. Um, to be honest, I was not exactly sure like what I was doing. <laughs> okay, let, let me let me explain it. A bit better. So when it comes to learning about OpenCV, there were different things uh, in NumPy that that honestly I I found myself asking like you know why am I learning this like uh, who would do this what what is the scenario or the situation where you actually do something like that you know this is the very same question that I was asking uh, when I was a secondary student secondary school student. Uh, learning about uh, matrix operations as part of my mathematics subject. Uh, and at the time, I was always wondering like, okay, we learn about matrix multiplication and in matrix inversion, uh, inverting a matrix. But at the end of the day, in fact, in fact, you know, for the past, for so long, in fact, I feel like a lot of the things we have been learning in school or in a textbook, they kind of explain the how to you. They, they show you the steps, the step-by-step -step instruction. They show you how to solve a problem, how to do this, how to do that. But they don't really explain the, the why behind it. Like, what is the scenario where you, this is important, this is applicable. I feel that, you know, I, I don't know about schools today, Obviously, I, I I haven't been in academia. I haven't been a student for a very long time, so I don't really know what they are teaching in schools today. But if you are in school right now, if you are watching this video and you're a student and you are learning about stuff like this in your classes, 
I would love for you to share with me in the comments below, like, you know, do your teachers actually explain to you, like, how is this applicable in a real world scenario? Like, where would you apply what you're learning? I think that would be very interesting because it, it gives you a context to understand that, okay, um, there's a possibility that I could apply this in the future. And it makes learning a lot more interesting, I feel, a lot more meaningful. Um, for me, yeah, so when I'm learning about matrix multiplication, inversion, inversing images, like, okay, I, I followed the, the, the code and so on, and I'm still asking myself a question, like, okay, how am I going to apply this in, in a real-world situation? And I'm still scratching my head. I, I don't really have the answer for you right now. I'm still thinking about it. But if you guys have any answers about this, like when would you apply these applications in the real-world OpenCV uh, application? Uh, share with me in the comments, yeah? So anyway, at this point, I think it's really important for me not to skip any steps. Um, the thing about learning to me, right, to fully understand something, to fully understand the subject, I feel that I have to be willing to go through all of the basics. Okay, so for this series of videos, I already set my expectations um, that it could take seven to eight videos, right, to complete the series. And for, for me to upload these seven to eight videos, I estimate that it can take me the next couple of months to finish uploading all of them. So I'm only at my first one, so I actually have time, I feel. Okay, so when it comes to the kind of hardware that I want to feature, um, I actually made a video about this last week, and I'm just going to play it and uh, show it to you guys. Hey guys, so um, this is just a quick update on my OpenCV learning journey. So I shared with previously in a previous video about the kind of products that I want to use over this series of videos. Um, how many videos would there be in this series? Honestly, I can't tell you right now specifically, but I think it will be somewhere between five to seven or eight videos uh, depending on how much I can learn and, and how much I can pick up uh, along the way so a couple of products I initially shared you know that I want to feature during this series and most of them will say the same the only uh, product that I decided to swap out is the pixie 2 cam so um, for me personally I, I was thinking about featuring products that are more interesting in a sense and um, well, PC2 is interesting, but it's not kind of interesting that I'm thinking about, if you know what I mean. So obviously that's Raspberry Pi 4B, the Raspberry Pi board, and then I'm going to hook it up to a V2 camera, which I will show you um, what it is later. Now there is a newer camera that is being released that has been released with with uh, 4B when it first came out. But at the time when it was released, I just didn't have the budget to get the camera. So, um, so I'm going to just fall back on using the version 2 camera first. Now, of course, if the guys at Raspberry Pi, you see it in your hearts to so send me a set of the camera and lenses, uh, you know, I'll be happy to receive it and feature it and use it and talk about it in my future videos. So, the thing about OpenCV is that I, when I first had an interest to dive into this subject matter uh, one product also came into mind that was the uh, Jetson Nano by uh, NVIDIA so I have been a huge NVIDIA fan for a long time obviously being a PC gamer and all that so um, when NVIDIA decided to come up with their own um, single board computers I was like you know this this is on my wish list for a very long time and then I finally was able to get a 4GB model. So, um, and at the same time, I also had this, I ordered this camera, which is a 200 degree uh, view of view camera. So um, that is a very wide angle actually. And the whole reason was, I bought this because I wanted to work on a sort of a, to learn how automated vehicles are, 
created and you know like if I can create my own mini automated vehicle at home or to play with it would be fun right interesting so um, with that I went on to order this the Avia Safiro so the Safiro sorry Safiro Avia so um, I actually bought this uh, one and a half years ago in January of 2021 so um, yeah it's been sitting in my cupboard for the last 18 months so I feel kind of guilty about it but the fact that now I'm finally able to kind of focus on this subject matter of uh, learning about OpenCV computer vision I thought this would be a great opportunity to finally take it out of my cupboard and put it to good use so this is what I'm doing with it you know out here showing it on the camera um, and together with that I actually have the uh, Sephiro RVR Advanced Electronics Kit from SparkFun so uh, this one includes stuff like sensors, servo, motor and it also has the Pi camera V2 right, right here in the box so this is the one that I'll be using alright so in closing I just want to say that I know that this video might not seem like the most interesting part of the series I get it um, but the one thing I had in mind when I was uh, thinking about uploading this video is that there are so many videos out there so many YouTube content out there and so many things that we see people doing right whereby you just see the end product you see the end result but you don't really get to see uh, their learning journey how they got to that very point that they were able to upload that video or to do whatever that they were doing so this is part of what I want to do like I don't want to just record one video at the end to show you that this is what I'm doing and that's it but I also want to show you my learning experience to share with you my learning experience um, yeah so that, that's the whole point of making this video all right I'm gonna end here I'm, I don't want it to go on for too long um, do check out next week's video. I hope that next week I would be able to share more with you about what I've learned when it comes to OpenCV. Uh, and one of the things I hope to do towards the end of the week is to start uh, diving into the either the Open uh, MV H7 Cam Plus or to look into uh, Nvidia's Tesla uh, Nano. So either one of the hardware that's my target for the by the end of the week to actually to start tinkering with them uh, when it comes to open cv so uh but step by step i think most of this week is still going to be focused on raspberry pi and then using open cv it's the best platform to get started and i personally feel that this approach uh, could apply to most people if you are looking to get to learning uh OpenCV, uh, Vision AI uh, with IoT, right? So this might be the best approach, the most recommended approach that I can share with you guys um, because I tend to take the easiest approach. Like I need to, yeah, I need to do it step by step. So if you have, if you're after something similar in terms of learning experience and learning journey, then this might work for you as well. All right, so I will sign off here. I will see you. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.